Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our Wednesday evening program, uh, the World on Wednesday. And uh, this evening we're focusing with regards to Pakistan. We have with us on the line from Pakistan, Zaid Hamid, uh, who is a Pakistani security consultant and political commentator. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, baby. MashaAllah. Uh, how are you keeping this evening? It's already gone past 11 in Pakistan, uh, rather late. Uh, how's things in Pakistan uh, this evening? Well, as we say in our language, we are still on our battle station holding the fort. Pakistan is in a state of war. And for all of us who are particularly tasked with the responsibility of defending this land, for us, it's, it's a duty 24-7. There's no vacation now. Yes. Uh, is the situation getting worse day by day? No, it's not getting worse by any standard. In fact, it's getting better. Yes. What is, the point is that if you look at the Middle East, if you look at the entire greater Middle East, where the reshaping of the Muslim world is taking place, a new colonization, new invasion by the Crusader Zionists is taking place, you see major Muslim countries being decapitated and dismembered. And Libya has been taken out, Iraq is gone, Afghanistan is gone, Somalia is dismembered, Yemen has crisis and problem now, Egypt is decapitated and now they are going after, Sudan is dismembered and now they are going after Syria and then, uh, then after that Saudi Arabia and Iran. But Pakistan is facing this very war for the last 10 years and still the Pakistani state is robust, it's holding out, we are rolling back the American invasion and the Indian nexus with it, Pakistan army is still Pakistani armed forces and the ISI are still a united force. Nation is with the armed forces. And despite the fact that the regime is corrupt, incompetent and CIA is sponsored, the nation is holding out against its own very regime. And like, this is an unprecedented phenomenon. This is something, this kind of war, Pakistani nation or the Muslim world had never seen before. This is called an urban war, a war, a fourth generation war, which is fought within the urban environment, the way you see in Iraq, the way you are seeing in Libya right now. The civil war within the major urban centers. Now, this is the, precisely the war that has been imposed upon Pakistan from Afghanistan. And Afghanistan is occupied by CIA, by NATO, and by Indian Secret Service RAW. And they are pushing in this war inside Pakistan, and with the corrupt government, which is causing an economic collapse, and during this state of war, they are building political, economic and diplomatic relationships with India, giving them more concessions to penetrate into Pakistani media and in Pakistan's economy. And a sold out media. The Pakistani media is totally compromised. Americans have spent almost $400 million in just last couple of years to purchase and penetrate into Pakistani media. Now, with these odds, no other country would have sustained. But this is what saying, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Pakistan is a robust land. In all these wars, almost 100,000 people killed and wounded in the last few years in the war, which urban war that has been waged through suicide bombers, through car bombs, through explosions, improvised explosive devices, the war that has come into Pakistan. But despite this, Pakistan is running, despite this, people are hopeful, despite this, the nationalists, the patriots and the Islamists are regrouping, reorganizing, standing together with the armed forces. And now Indians and Americans are in panic because Americans are losing in Afghanistan. And Americans want to blame Pakistan, hold Pakistan responsible for their defeat. Pakistan is one nation, remember that, which had destroyed the Soviet Union in the 80s. And this is what the Americans fear, that if Pakistanis make up their mind today, we can do with these Americans what we did with the Soviets. American supply lines go through Pakistan. The air supply air corridor is over Pakistani airspace. And the American fuel goes through Pakistan. And Americans know that despite bluffing and threatening Pakistan, they do not have the capacity to wage another war on the Pakistani state. Pakistan is a nuclear armed state. It's a nuclear weapons Muslim country. And it's a stabilizing factor not just for the Asian region, but also for the Middle East. <coughs> because even the Israelis know that as long as Pakistan's nuclear potential is intact, Israel mm. cannot expand into greater Israel. Now, this is why people don't realize that Pakistan is not just a last frontier of Muslim world, it is also the last frontier for the entire humanity against the expansion of Zionist 
colonial expansionist violent fascist ideologies both from the indian axis and from the jewish axis so mm -hmm. this is where pakistan stands in the middle today pakistan is in the eye of storm and this is the land which even the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his previous in any hadith mubarak i have called the land of khurasan the land of talakan and the land of mawra al nahar the region between the great rivers of indus and the great river of oxus is the battlefield now and pakistan is the center of gravity Yes, very interesting. I see comments that you've put up on your Facebook official page in, and you say that now the latest U.S. and Indian threats, the pressure is going to mount on the army exponentially, which uh, it cannot sustain until uh, it is also controlled, uh, the executive and judiciary and the media. Tell us more about that. Yes, you see, this is what, precisely what we are discussing. What the Americans are doing is they were trying to control the Pakistan army and the ISI, and they have not been able to do that. And that is why they removed Musharraf because Musharraf was their ally. Musharraf worked with them for several years, brought the Americans inside Pakistan, destroyed Afghanistan, gave all the access to the CIA. But there was a limit beyond which even Musharraf could not do. That is why the CIA decided to remove Musharraf and bring a weaker people, more corrupt, more incompetent, like Zardari, for example. And but a Pakistan army since 2007 had put up a solid defense against the CIA and the Americans. we will not let you destabilize pakistan we will not let you take away pakistan's nuclear program we will not give you the access into pakistan security establishment so this is where the political government went on a totally tangent different direction from the armed forces and americans invested into the media and americans invested into the judiciary also so that is why you see that pakistani judicial system has collapsed in the last 10 years despite being in a state of war The judiciary has not even convicted a single terrorist to death. Not a single terrorist. The cases of terrorism are not heard in the in the judicial process. Judges are scared. They are corrupt. They don't want to decide. So as a result, thousands of terrorists and suicide bombers who are kept are actually released back by the system to start to wage their war all over again. Now this is increasing the pressure on the army. So once the army is fighting a <coughs> high intensity war. and the judiciary is not supporting it the media is not supporting it the government is not supporting it then the only option left to the army is that they can hold on for a certain period of time but not beyond that they will have to control the judiciary and the media and the executive so that a total response can be developed against this total war that has been waged against the pakistani state and in general against the muslim world so this is what we mean this is what we are actually working on very strongly that this government has outlived its useful life this government was brought in by the cia recently very interestingly the supreme court has given a decision about karachi violence also the urban violence that was going on in karachi which had killed over 1500 people in just two months period in the in the biggest metropolitan part of metropolis of asia supreme court decided gave a judgment that all political parties have armed and militant wings and those wings are involved in assassinations and counter assassinations now this is an indictment against the entire political process of pakistan because the political parties which are holding karachi are actually the political parties which are controlling the center in islamabad also but the supreme court fell short did not actually disqualify the government <clears throat> but only asked the government to rectify itself which is a very weak statement because the corrupt government will not rectify itself they cannot rectify themselves so again supreme court disappointed the judiciary disappointed the nation disappointed the army and gave a new lease of life to this corrupt government to continue with the violence which they were doing before so this is what we mean that the with this kind of an environment army is the decisive factor army will have to remove this government will have to control the media which is waging a massive disinformation psychological war against the state against the army against the isi actually protecting the interests of the indians and the americans and in this kind of war this is what we call the fourth generation war because it is fought not on nuclear plane it is not fought on the border it is fought within the cities using the state infrastructure of of media of economy of politics of judiciary on in supporting the insurgent and terrorist groups on ground so this is a new dimension of war which you are seeing as we said you see these examples in middle east as well right now and pakistan whatever is happening in pakistan is not different 
from the reshaping of the Middle East that is taking place in the Muslim world now. Yes, absolutely. Uh, now, very interesting, in one of the tweets that you send out on Twitter, uh, there's reference that is made to a speech of President Obama in March this year titled, A New Strategy for Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, take us through some of that. You see, when Obama came, you remember Bush had handed over Afghanistan to Obama and he had asked Obama to finish the task which Bush could not. And Obama came up with a new doctrine called the ASPAC. The ASPAC doctrine, one needs to understand what this is actually. Initially, from 2001 to 2007, Afghanistan was the battlefield for the Americans. But after 2007, they introduced this doctrine called ASPAC, Afghanistan-Pakistan, which meant that now Pakistan would also be considered a battlefield along with Afghanistan, and Pakistan will not be treated as a friend, as an ally. Now this meant that war in Afghanistan would be pushed into Pakistan. And this is precisely what we saw after 2007. That the entire suicide bombings, war, insurgencies, terrorism, support to, and the object and process of balkanization of Pakistan, which we here call the Yugoslavia Doctrine, that was deployed on Pakistan. That is why you would note that the man who broke down Yugoslavia on behalf of Americans and the NATO was Mr. Richard, Richard Holbrook. He signed the Dayton Peace Agreement which basically decided the fate of Yugoslavia and broke it down into five and six different countries. Similarly, Richard Holbrook was sent to Afghanistan and Pakistan as an envoy to basically complete the end game of ASPAC. Objective was to create so much anarchy in Pakistan the world community could move in and say Pakistan's nuclear weapons are unsafe. Nuclear weapons should be taken away by the coalition of the willing under the UN mandate. And then the Pakistani state should be dismembered the way it was this, the way Yugoslavia was dismembered. This was the Obama's mission. This was the Obama's duty after Bush to achieve this objective. But now his tenure is finishing also. And they have achieved nothing. And that is why you find there is panic in Obama, Obama's administration, there is panic in the CIA, and the most fierce battle is going on right now between the CIA and the ISI. Because CIA knows that it's only the Pakistani ISI and the army which are resisting the CIA objectives in Pakistan, to dismember Pakistan, to denuclearize Pakistan, to make Pakistan a failed, dysfunctional state like Iraq or Libya. But this is not happening. So, the next phase of this aspect would be that they would try to harm and hurt Pakistan army's reputation, its dignity, its leadership, and its assets. That's why you find attacks on the GSU, attacks on the Pakistan naval bases, attacks on Pakistan army, proposed attacks on Pakistan army leadership. So, this is what is happening right now. This is the Obama, this war, <coughs> the Obama's doctrine which he could not deploy and now they are, they have absolutely no strategy in Afghanistan. They don't know what to do. You saw that just few weeks back, they threatened Pakistan with putting boots on ground, they threatened Pakistan with, that, with an attack, that Pakistan is supporting the Jalaluddin Haqqani network. But when the Pakistani nation got together, when the Pakistan army gave a very firm response, suddenly within a few days, the entire American bravado disappeared in thin air as if it never existed. This is not post 9-11 scenario when the Americans had more high moral ground, they were aggressive, they were confident and they were willing to go into any country to destroy it. Now after 10 years, they are defeated, they are humiliated, they are insulted and they know that yes. their entire logistic supply line goes through Pakistan and Pakistan today controls the destiny of the Americans inside Afghanistan. Uh, very interesting that when you speak about America, sometimes you speak of India with the same breath and in the, painting them with the same brush. Uh, is it on equal terms in the sense that uh, both are equally on the opposite end of Pakistan? You see, this is precisely the point. Uh, Americans themselves cannot handle Pakistan. They need India to handle Pakistan as well with them. And India cannot fight Pakistan on their own. They want to fight to the last American. So the, the actual American problems that they're having with Pakistan, Indians have joined hand with the Americans and said, we will help you stabilize Afghanistan. 
we will support you in afghanistan to fight against the taliban and the threat from pakistan and recently you have seen that indians and americans have started to sign strategic partnership or in the region against two threats one threat is pakistan other threat is china and indians are exploiting this american fear to build a strategy in the region which would give them the role of a super policeman in the entire region on the american shoulders and americans since they are stuck they are desperate they are more than willing to share their load with the indians and that is why you find the indians penetrating heavily into afghanistan and have recently signed a peace of strategic agreement according to which india would build the afghan army afghan army officers would be trained in india and indian army and the instructors would be present in afghanistan in the backyard of pakistan this is something pakistan will never accept for pakistan the actual real threat is from india not the americans americans come from across the seven seas american supply line their logistic lines they have fought so many wars now that they are defeated already their economy is crumbled they they cannot their economic ratings are being downgraded every uh, every so often and their economy at home is crashing so americans are not a problem for us we control the american jugular line also their supplies go through pakistan we can choke them any time we want but pakistan real and serious threat is from the indians both from the eastern border and from the western border which is afghanistan now so mm. that is why all this insurgencies and violence and terrorism that you see in, inside pakistan are actually done by the indians under the umbrella of cia cia was not cia is not pakistan specialist organization just like cia whenever they want to deal with arabs they hire the services of israeli secret service mossad because mossad is an arab specialist secret service american most of the cia officers and operators here don't even speak urdu don't even speak local languages don't even know the tribal culture but the indians know that and that is why americans heavily rely on india as far as dealing with pakistan is concerned and heavily rely on israelis as far as dealing with palestinian and arab muslim world is concerned so this is why we consider both israelis and indians equal threat and enemies as we have americans today yes sir, very interesting in that regard uh, uncovering that now uh, with regards to uh, we spoke about afghanistan and uh, india now all well, afghanistan is a, a strategic partnership agreement with india uh, uh, what is the direct negative repercussion on the relationship with pakistan uh, you see as far as the afghan government is concerned the government of hamid karzai it's a puppet regime from all international standards the regime is only limited to the streets of kabul and even there it is restricted to the presidential palace only so the kabul government means nothing kabul government and karzai is just like babra karmal and hafizullah amin and nur mohammad taraki of the soviet era when the soviets were in control and these puppet regimes were in kabul so the agreement that karzai has signed with india is basically an agreement of duress is that he has no power he has no clout no control over any strategic development in the region so basically it's an agreement between the cia and raw to allow indians to come into afghanistan and take charge of the situation while americans plan to leave i met you islam that ceo that zeli Now, brother zaid a text message coming through and inquiring as to what is the situation with regards to the floods at the moment the rains have uh, wreaked havoc in pakistan yes they have um, the situation on ground is definitely serious and if you remember this happened last year also but never before like this and this phenomena is now repetitive every year and this is not global warming i can assure you that what have we last year we had told this also and on your radio we had discussed this phenomena as well that all pakistani rivers that flow into pakistan they flow in from indian occupied kashmir mm. and india had constructed now they have completed about 50 to 60 dams where they are controlling the water flowing into pakistan <clears throat> during the crop season they block the water supply and during the some monsoon season when the rains are already falling and rivers are slightly flooded anyway they release the water causing floods into riparian lands in the river deltas of pakistan now this is 
a new way of war. This is the water war that is being waged on Pakistan. Last year, we had told you on your very program, yes. every year this phenomena will be repeated. And at that time, people were surprised that when we said that the water on ground is not proportional to the rains that fell. If you remember that, we discussed this issue as well. Yes. <clears throat> so, and this is exactly what happened this year as well. India is using water as a strategic weapon against Pakistan. Mm. They deliberately released floods. They deliberately opened the gates of the dam and flooded Pakistan when already the waters were on slightly medium to low flood, but not to this catastrophic level. This catastrophe came because extra water was released by the Indians. And this government, since it's corrupt, incompetent, treacherous, already hands and gloves with the CIA and the RAW, they did not raise a flutter. They did not raise a voice. And of course the media, as we said, is already busy into and compromised into issue, blowing up petty issues of street violence and petty crimes. They don't have the vision to see this global or, or the regional threat that is being waged against Pakistan, the war that has been designed against Pakistan on this axis also. Mm -hmm. so the, and then this government is so corrupt that the international community did not even move in to give them any support or funds or money. Because last year, billions of dollars came and they usurped it. They, they embezzled it. This Zardari is known to be the most corrupt man in the world. He's known as Mr. 10%, but now he's Mr. 100% or 200% perhaps. So, and this is what the issue is. The government is corrupt. The Indians are waging a war. The media is absolutely not raising the right, asking the right questions. An army is too involved in fighting urban wars. And that is why you find this crisis aggravated. aggravated. Otherwise, uh, the country should not have been there at the first place, and if it was there, it could be handled. The reason that it has gone out of control is that like every other state institution, the railways have gone totally collapsed, the Pakistan Airlines has collapsed, Pakistan oil and gas institutions or organizations are collapsing. It's not because the Pakistani state does not have infrastructure. It's simply because they have the most corrupt, incompetent, and r robbers at the helm of affairs who are looting as if there is no tomorrow. <laughs> so... Things that can be managed if only, as we said, this is what our point was, that army has already delayed it beyond reasonable limits. Army must remove this government, bring in patriotic people who can pull the country back from this brink of nosedive that this national economy and society is taking right now. <coughs> the SMS number 786 uh, the email address www.ymetrodislam.co.za or you could call in to the studio 0118541548. Uh, a listener sending a text through and wanting you to present your analysis of the current situation in Libya. You see, the Libya, as you have said, Habibi, try to understand whatever is happening in Libya is exactly what is happening in Pakistan. What, is ha what happened in Sudan before and what happened in Iraq before that? <clears throat> the mu entire Muslim world is being reshaped. They are changing the geography of the Muslim countries. They want to make them smaller lands, smaller nations. This present geography that you see, <clears throat> this entire Muslim world, this geography was drawn after the First World War, when the Ottoman Empire was broken down. And after the Belfort Declaration, when the British Empire had told the Jewish state had told Mr. Rothschild, as a representative of the Jewish Zionist community, that we are, the British government is going to give you a state of Palestine. It was decided after the First World War, in the Balfour Declaration. And that is where the entire Muslim world was balkanized, and the maps were drawn, which you see them today. Mm. But since the objective of creation of Israel was not achieved by the First World War, they had to wage another war, and immediately after the Second World War, in 1948, the State of Israel was created. But State of Israel was created for a purpose, for a particular reason. It was not supposed to be limited to this land of Palestine. There is a concept called the Greater Israel. And the Greater Israel extends on one end from Iraq, the river Euphrates, and on the south, on the borders of Medina, in, in the villages of Khaybar, from where the Jews had been thrown out by Rasulullah and the Muslims at that time. And on one end, they want to extend up to Egypt, to the, to the desert of Sinai. To achieve this objective, they have to break large Muslim countries in the Middle East into smaller, chaotic, anarchic, headless, failed, dysfunctional states. This is the objective. They have to do this. They have to control the resources which are here. That's why you find Iraq totally dismembered and destroyed but the Iraqi oil stations are still working, pumping out billions of dollars of oil 
out to Europe and America, but the Iraqi people do not have oil and fuel for their vehicles. Similarly, this is exactly what they plan to do for Libya. Even before the, the, the rebels or even before this transitional council had moved out of Benghazi, already a bank had been formed, they had already started pumping oil from Benghazi, and the oil resources and revenues which belong to the people of Libya were already in the hands of the Americans and the NATO, and they were having conferences fighting amongst each other which country would get how much share from the Libyan oil. So it's the resources, it's the oil, it's the dismemberment of large Muslim countries, making them chaotic states. They will plan the same thing for Syria also. Then they'll do the same thing for Egypt also. They will have the fight. Right now in Egypt you see already the clashes between Coptic Muslims, uh, Muslims and Coptics have already started. The same war they did in Sudan, the war between Christians and Muslims. And once that war became aggravated, they divided Sudan on Christian and Muslim lines. Southern Sudan is Christian, you know that. Mm. So, so now they want to create this kind of anarchy in Egypt also. Husni Mubarak was removed. No democracy came there. Dictatorship came. The army took over. And now nobody talks about Egypt. Why? Because the objective which they wanted to achieve, initially they could not achieve. They were, they, millions of people that came out on the street, they were mostly Muslims. They were anti-Israel. They were anti-American. And when the CIA saw this, that the anti-Mubarak revolution is being hijacked by the Muslims, they asked the army to intervene and take over. And now nobody talks about democracy there. In Libya, they fought the army generals. Few army generals broke off from Gaddafi. Their rebels gathered around them. NATO gave them the air support. And then you see a civil war going on in Libya right now. They are planning the same thing in Syria also. And of course, let me tell you very clearly, Saudi Arabia and then Iran would be the next target. Pakistan is already in a state of war. Yes. So this is the game plan. This is the game plan that's happening, it's unfolding. Muslims are still in a state of disbelief and denial. No, it can't happen. This is a conspiracy theory. It's not happening. It, Americans are not that bad. I mean, one has to be totally insane not to see the game that is coming to us. Not to see the tsunami that's hitting us already. Mm -mm. Uh, you made reference to Iran and Saudi Arabia a moment <clears throat> ago. Now, uh, a text message coming through and asking you to clarify or any information with regards to U.S. claims foiling a plot to kill Saudi ambassador. Uh, what has happened over there? Any in clarity in that regard? You see, the Americans are compulsive liars. Always remember that. They are absolute compulsive liars. They waged a war on Iraq, decimated Iraq, on a false pretext that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Never ever forget that. If one is so stupid as to constantly keep believing the same liar, then, when deser then one deserves the humiliation, insult and defeat that they impose upon us then. Pakistan has been mediating between Iran and Saudi Arabia, bringing them closer. Lately you would see this, that Pakistan and Iran have come very closer. Pakistan and Saudi Arabia was already very close. And because of the Bahrain crisis, the relationship between Iran and Saudi Arabia were deteriorating. And Pakistani move, Pakistan moved in. Pakistan brought the two countries together and there were great peace initiatives going on between Iran and Saudi Arabia through back channel diplomacy with Pakistan heavily involved into this. And this regional alliance of Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and Iran was forming despite US displeasure and the resistance to block it. This is the, next, the latest move that you see today. The, the news coming out that the Americans have foiled a plot. This is rubbish, ridiculous nonsense. This is so childishly drawn. Iranians don't have to assassinate the Saudi ambassador in Washington or in America or anywhere else to achieve what they want to achieve in the region. It would be absolutely suicidal for the Iranians to do this kind of thing anywhere in the world against the Saudis at this stage when Iran's own survival depends upon having peace in the region. The threat is not Saudi Arabia for them. The threat are the Americans. For the Saudi Arabia also, Iran is not the threat. Americans are the threat. Iran is not shaping the Middle East. Americans are the reshaping the Middle East. But Saudis are stuck with the Americans. So, so the Saudi environment, the politics, the government is so tightly controlled, their oil supply is so tightly controlled by the Americans that Saudis are desperate now. They really don't know what to do, to be honest, because the, they see the storm rising all around them, and they have no response strategy. The only response strategy Saudis can have is 
to ally themselves with Pakistan and Iran and form a larger security bloc, which Saudis have been trying to do. And this is what the Americans are trying to scuttle by this kind of nonsense propaganda disinformation war. Yes, now to come back to something that we did discuss a few minutes ago and uh, very interesting comments that you put up on your Facebook page and it reads the threat analysis is that Pakistan army is the only institution left today which is defending Pakistan against all threats internal and external US, NATO, India is the external threats within the country even the ruling political parties are the terrorist gangs which are waging the war against the state the situation cannot get more facial and sinister than this. Media is totally out of control and an instrument of hostile information uh, war against the state. Uh, these types of comments, uh, is it uh, largely circulated around Pakistan? Do people accept this or is it immediately rejected by people who read it in Pakistan? No, Alhamdulillah, we are respected, highly respected. And we are very blunt. I mean, you don't have to tap our phones to hear what we are planning and because whatever we say, we say it in the open media. And just to give you one example, I mean, just a few weeks back, when the Karachi violence was at its extreme, we did a very, very harsh program on the biggest Pakistan's, one of the largest news network channels, AFY. We did a program on that with Dr. Danish, another very good anchor. And it was a very hard, brutal, hard-hitting program against the judiciary and against the government as well even asked the army to intervene. And immediately, within two hours of that program, the Supreme Court formed a bench for hearing the Karachi violence, headed it himself, and started the massive legal proceedings, which before that he had not done or he had not mustered the courage to do. And the army chief gave the statement that if the situation worsened any further in Karachi, army would move in. And that happened immediately after our program which was so brutal, so harsh, that it shook the entire leadership, shook the entire country. So our point of view is now respected, despite the fact that the mainstream media is reluctant to give us a television program. Now, I don't have a television program in the mainstream media, because that's where the American pressure is, that they're not allowed to do that. Americans buy them off, giving their advertisements, funds, money, comes to the, to the national media, and they don't give me a regular program. But as a commentator, I'm very regularly invited because they know that, alhamdulillah, our opinion changes the national security profile and politics. Yes, just to add to that, I see a very interesting comment posted here by one of the uh, contributors on this uh, website. And they say, during the last 10 years, we see a lot of anti-Pakistani traitors got exposed, especially in the last years. Allah Ta'ala has used people like Sir Zaid Hamid to expose these people. So uh, we'll, take, we'll uh, give you an opportunity to comment on that. In the meantime, we have a caller on the line. Welcome the caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Mustafa? Alhamdulillah, yourself. Assalamu alaikum to your guest, Brother Zaid. Wa alaikum wa salam. I what he says about today, you know, America using this childish ploy, you know, to implicate Iran there. And, but just to sort of... Explain the extent to uh, you know how low they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Um, they even you know trying to bring pressure to bear upon uh, South African company in Sasol to disinvest from um, you know uh, Iran. Uh, you know because they got a joint like um, chemical polymer uh, you know company going there. So I mean they're using all the dirty tricks you know and, and, and reaching their tentacles are reaching as far as South Africa. You know trying to. Yeah. Muscle their way. So, yeah, they, they, they're full of all these red flag operations and dirty tricks. Um, but, but, you know, I mean, any discerning person would uh, sort of see all their uh, lines, as uh, Brother Zaid is saying. Yes, absolutely. And that's exactly what he's been highlighting. Jazakallah khair for the okay. contribution. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Y yes, uh, Brother Zaid, anything you'd like to add to that? <coughs> no, mashallah, he's absolutely correct. We. But one thing I would like to add to this is that now we Muslims, and especially Pakistan and Iran, do not need to take, um, take America as a serious threat. Americans are within our control now. They're within our grasp. They can bluff. They can try to put some economic sanctions. They can use international diplomacy and use their muscle in the United Nations. But reality is that 150,000 American NATO and ISAF troops in Afghanistan are now like rats in a cage. They are trapped. The American economy at home is destroying. They don't have the capacity to wage a war against Iran or against Pakistan. 
and if pakistan and iran form a united security front in the region and decide the fate of the foreign extra regional forces in afghanistan americans will have no choice but to leave while they can because there is a possibility also that as the american general just few months ago had told its troops that now the econ american economy is so bad that we may not even able to pay you the next month's salary if the american government defaults you remember the american obama government just couple of months ago was on the verge of default actually you know? yeah. so they, if that had happened and only they have seek a temporary relief by getting some credit line but that does not mean the american economy has improved the major american western european banks are now being downgraded the economy of four large european countries the called the big states portugal italy greece and spain is now collapsing and bringing down the entire european union economy with it so we have to be realistic and assessment of the strength of the enemy also no need to blow them out of proportion and still consider them as superpowers they are no more superpowers their powers have been destroyed and buried in the mountains of afghanistan the way the superpower of soviet union was destroyed and buried there hmm. so there's absolutely no need they can exploit weaker muslim countries <coughs> they can exploit the media they can exploit the traitors within our ranks but in reality if any muslim country takes a stand against them there's nothing americans can do there's nothing european nato can do we hold their jugular and we can twist it too uh, very interesting what you've been saying and uh, just to make reference again to the point that i raised before the caller uh, that uh, this person on facebook has commented and said that uh, 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 you've been instrumental in exposing many people like this over the last 10 years. Uh, take us through some of those uh, uh, that you've been working on and exposing. You see, the, fact, the entire Pakistan's political elite, the People's Party, Zardari, his, his ambassador to America, Hussain Akhati, the interior minister, Rahman Malik, the MQM particularly, have been very viciously attacking MQM as Dr. Hussain. Because MQM is another insurgent group. It's a terrorist gang created by the CIA and British intelligence MI6 to wage an urban war on the streets of Sindh and Karachi. Similarly, Awami National Party, the separatist group, which is again part of the government, which but historically has been allied to historically has been allied to the Indians and now to the CIA, again with the objective of dismemberment of Pakistan. And of course, the elements in the media. Yes. The Pakistani media, there is a huge group called SEFMA, South Asian Federation of Free Journalists. And SEFMA is entirely Indian funded, Indian controlled. The SEFMA people, like the major journalists and power ha media houses in Pakistan, which are on the agenda of the CIA, which are on the agenda of the Indians. Like the Delhi Times, the most famous group which you hear, the Delhi Times, the Najam Sethi. All, and his gang, Asma Jahangir, uh, Imtiaz Alam, Kushnud Ali Khan, these are the top journalists of Pakistan who are actually on the payroll of Indians or the CIA. Mm. And we have been fighting a war against them on the media. And that's why on the media, wherever they have their influence, they don't allow us to come. They, have, they, try, they find cases on us. They find murder cases against me. They are using, they are deploying terrorist, fascist terrorist gangs to, uh, to eliminate and assassinate me. I mean, I mean, every group, from NQM to Army National Party to the Hikata Taliban Pakistan to SAFMA to terrorist groups, everybody is after the blood of your brother. But simply because, alhamdulillah, we are waging this war to expose these traitors of Umar Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to expose these traitors of Pakistan and Muslim Ummah, and we'll keep on doing it yes. because Muslim, Muslim, our Muslim blood is being spilled. And unless we raise our voice, unless we take a stand against these blackmailers and traitors, no. There is absolutely no hope that we would reclaim our honor and dignity. And we have, we have made up our mind. We'll live with dignity. And inshallah, we'll die with honor. Uh, an email coming through from a brother, Muhammad Daya, and he says, but before we go to that, we have a call on the line. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Also, Mufti, uh, salam to brother there. Yes. Uh, I want to ask the brother what he think about, uh, about uh, Turkey's, uh, you know, as we think that Turkey is uh, also, you know, uh, standing up against Americans or... And, uh, yes, Habibi. Uh, MashaAllah, if there is any country in the Muslim world today, mm. other than Iran, to whom we look to look with hope and dignity and courage, that is Turkey. Turkey is now emerging as a leader of the Muslim world. And MashaAllah, their leadership is really behaving <coughs> within the constraints they have. They have serious constraints. They live in an environment where the armed forces are secular, where the armed forces are hostile to the government. And in the back, in the, in the previous, in the past, 
the Turkish army has overthrown the Islamic government as well many times before. So now they are trading very carefully. But within the constraints, they have built the Turkish economy so strong, they have built a national consensus so strong that now even the army is forced, the secular army is forced to respect the political government of Sayyid Batukan and, and his associates. And this, mashallah, is a great sign that Turkey is now taking on the Israelis, Turkey is taking a stand against Americans despite being a member of the NATO. They are outreaching themselves from Central Asia, from Eastern Turkestan to Libya, the Texas. Turkey is now in exerting itself. And even for peace in Afghanistan, Turkey has engaged the Afghan Taliban, invited them to open an office in Turkey, and is acting as a peace mediator between the Tajiks, Uzbeks and Pashtun, which is a great sign because Turkey is extremely close friend of Pakistan also. Mm. And Pakistan is the only country within these four countries, Turks, Iranian, Saudis, and Pakistanis, Pakistan is the only country which has an excellent relationship with all three of them, with Iran, Turkey and Saudi Arabia. And mm. despite Turkey and Saudi Arabia having differences, despite Turkey and Iran having differences, despite Iran, Saudi Arabia having differences, it's the Pakistan's role which is, central, which is central, critical, in bringing all these three countries together into a regional bloc of Muslim countries. And Pakistan had already activated them. There are talks of a railway line <coughs> from Islamabad to Istanbul, which will go across Iran. And, and inshallah free trade agreements and, yes. and visa free regimes. But of course, the only weak link in this entire game is the government in Islamabad, in Pakistan. The Iranian government is patriotic, the Turkish government is patriotic, but the Pakistani government is treacherous. They're traitors and they need to be removed. Once there's a solid government in Islamabad, inshallah, and there's nothing stopping this block. This is destined. This will happen, inshallah, and we'll yes. make it happen, Bezillah. Brother, you, you are satisfied with the answer? Yeah, inshallah. The another question was about Pakistan. Uh, as uh, the brother says, why the, our, the Pakistani people don't stand up like they done it in Egypt or in, you know, now they are, at the moment they're doing in Syria. You know? Yes. Okay, Jazakallah for the call. Mula, uh, the brother, brother Zaid will respond to that. Inshallah. Yeah, okay, you can listen. Uh, so, so. Habibi, something in mind that in, that in Syria and in Egypt there was no suicide bombing campaign, urban war, insurgencies, violence. It was not going on. Mm. And the government and the state were not in a state of collapse as they are in Pakistan. In Pakistan for the last 10 years, there's a massive war going on, particularly for the last three years, four years, over a hundred thousand Pakistanis have been killed or wounded and over a thousand suicide bombings have taken place <coughs> in the Pakistani city. So the Pakistani people are already in a state of war, they're already surviving, literally, and economic conditions are so intense that people do not have, except for raging, except for coming out, burning things down, violence against the, people, against the government, they are, and they have no leadership. They have still not been able to find any political leadership because the entire political leadership is corrupt and compromised. Mm. So now the nation is looking towards the army, which stands an institute, organized, disciplined, and doing the duty of defense of Pakistan. So I can assure you, inshallah, the change is coming, and the change would come through the army, because army would not take this nonsense for long. And army was already involved in fighting a war, but now situation on ground is stabilizing, and now the attention of the army would be towards the government to stabilize the economy and to stabilize, to control the media and for generating some diplomatic and political support as well. And that cannot be done, as we said. Army cannot do it unless it changes the government and bring in the people who are willing to deliver. And inshallah, soon it will be. Jazakumullah khair for the informative discussion. We always appreciate your time on Radio Islam. And it's always very intriguing and interesting having people riveted to the radios and listening to this across the globe. Uh, we say Jazakumullah.